Okay, hi everyone. Happy Saturday. This is Dr. Peggy Simmingson. I'm an associate professor at UT Arlington. We do these we monthly webinars to share advice and to keep in touch with the community and our grads as well as our pre-service teachers. And so we welcome you. We encourage you to type questions or comments at all times in the chat window. You can also use emoticons. We encourage those. You can do the thumbs up. Um, that's in the participant window. Just below my name, you can do happy face, LOL, that kind of thing. But we definitely encourage questions and comments along the way. Hosting our webinar, we have Dr. Amanda Hurlbutt, who I will introduce momentarily. Dr. Mohan, Dr. Mohan Pant, ass assistant professor also myself, and then Dr. John Smith is on here as well, and he's our department chair. So thanks, everyone, for joining us to help moderate our session. We also have Dr. Harrison McCoy, and a teacher, secondary level teacher, in our adjacent school district, Arlington ISD. So welcome to, to Harrison. So these are our opinions. They don't re necessarily reflect the views of UT Arlington. You're going to hear a variety of viewpoints. Today's topic is technology focused. And so we'll give you as much information as we can. If you have questions too, again, feel free to put them in the chat window. You might want to make a list of things to look up later too. Remember that we use social media. And so if you go to youtube.com slash UTA New Teachers, you can find our videos. Usually the next day is when we post them. The, today's slides are already on SlideShare, and so if you go there, you can locate the slides. I will go ahead and put them in the chat window if you want them to look at later. And we also have a Facebook page for our department in this project. Upcoming webinars, November 7th and December 5th, topics to be announced. Let us know where you are. Um, use the pen tool next to the video and participant window. It's the third button down. And put an X where you are located. Or feel free to type where you are in the chat window. We'll give people a few seconds to do this. And we'll do it as well. I am in Bedford, Texas in the DFW Metroplex. Austin, great. Awesome. Let us know if you're a UTA grad also. Great, we're kind of all over the Metroplex and all over Texas. That's awesome. OK, a lot of us in the mid-cities. OK, perfect. OK, great. Excellent. Letting us know where you are is a fun way to connect. Also, use the voting tool to tell us, are you a pre-service teacher? Are you a first through third year teacher and UTA graduate, first through third year teacher and non-UTA grad? fourth year teacher and above, or faculty. The voting tool is next to the hand in the participant window. It's just below my name that says Peggy Simmingson moderator. We we'll give people a chance. Or just type it in the chat window. That might be easier, especially if you're joining by phone. So we'll give a second people a second to vote. OK, I'm going to display the results. OK, so we're kind of a combination um, of different backgrounds. That's great. OK, thanks, everyone. Today's topic, I'll briefly introduce it. I want to point out um, Edmodo intersects with a couple of different multidisciplinary areas. So technology integration can really intersect with science, social studies, um, today, I think we'll hear about computer science. I can easily see Edmodo being used with language arts, with reading and writing and sharing of writing and commenting. I can see it being used even in math as students problem solve together. Um, it's definitely related to mobile learning. We all like to have our phones handy, right? And so there is an Edmodo app, and so I would encourage you to download the Edmodo app and also look for lesson plans online. 
Um, it has to do with the flipped classroom approach where you have students do complete work outside of the lecture time and then they're doing work on their own as well. Um, and Dr. Hurlbut will talk about parent involvement and that it's actually kind of expected at the elementary level. Edmodo can help you with having a paperless classroom, right? We're getting away from pen and paper and notebooks and more towards digital reading, writing, and learning. And then, of course, finally, the buzzword of now is 21st century learning. So these are all the jargon terms, kind of, that tell us more about where Edmodo fits in with the curriculum. It's all of these things. I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Amanda Hurlbut. She's a visiting assistant professor of curriculum and instruction, and she specializes in um, teacher education, elementary literacy, and she is a graduate of, I believe, the University of North Texas. She's also an experienced school teacher, classroom teacher, and specialist, instructional specialist, and more. She spent nine years in the public school. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Dr. Hurlbut, and she's going to talk about elementary experiences with Edmodo, and I'm excited to hear this. So take it away. Okay. Hi, everyone. My section is probably going to be pretty brief. When I saw that we were doing a webinar on Edmodo, I just knew that I wanted to represent an elementary perspective because that was something that when I was working as an assistant principal in an elementary school, I saw that my teachers were using in the classrooms, and it was a very effective educational tool. Um, so when you look at Edmodo or any kind of social media in the, the elementary classroom, sometimes you have parents that are very resistant because especially with your third, fourth, and fifth grade students, they may or may not have a cell phone. They may or may not have regular access to computers. But I know a lot of parents that have been very hesitant to allow their children to have access to social media without any kind of adult supervision. So Edmodo not only looks like Facebook, but it allows you basically a safe format to allow your students to interact with each other in social media that is really controlled and monitored by adults. And so my main, uh, I guess not my main, but my excitement about using Edmodo is that you can actually have the parents involved. I'm not going to talk about um, the specifics because I think Dr. McCoy is a little bit more of an expert in actually using it in the classroom than I am. I just wanted to represent that elementary view. So because you can control who has access to your specific page, you have a classroom code and you can invite, you can not only invite your students, but you can also invite the parents so that if they have any kind of hesitations about elementary students using social media at school, the parents are right there and seeing everything that happens. Um, some of the specific ways that I've actually seen Edmodo being used in the elementary classroom is in, I think like Dr. Simmingson was talking about the flipped classroom, I would have teachers that would post uh, difficult lessons or introductory lessons, for example, in math, because a lot of times we hear you know, with Common Core and some of the initiatives that are going along with how we teach math, it's very different than the way that our parents were taught math. So the parents, a lot of times when they're helping their children with homework, they don't know the strategies that we're teaching them. So what I've seen the teachers do is they actually will create a five to seven minute video of themselves introducing a math concept or explaining how they teach that math concept, and then they go and post it on the Edmodo site or and put a link basically to that um, video so that the parents can access it and the students can access it at home when they're working on their homework. Another way that I've seen is basically organizing because it does have, and I think that I've got um, a slide in here, basically you can create a library and then you can also create folders within the library. So you basically can upload um, anything that you're using in your classroom. You can upload uh, copies of homework. So let's say that a, a child is notorious for maybe forgetting homework at school. Um, the parent can easily go and download that homework or the child can go and download that homework and have a copy at home. Um, I know a lot of schools are requiring teachers and schools to send out the newsletters. So you can put those newsletters there and parents always have one place to access all the information rather than relying on the multiple forms of communication that a school uses. I can tell you from firsthand experience that my daughter's school uses, I think they have five different methods of communication. It's a little overwhelming. And I know if they had just one method for me to go and find the information that I needed, it would be very helpful. Um, I do know there is an area in Edmodo where you can connect to Google Drive. A lot of the school districts around here are, they're, 
requiring that their teachers have the Google certification, the Google Doc. And so this connects directly to that Google Drive um, application so that you can actually link those directly. And then really, I just, the social media aspect of it is being able to actually monitor the discussion board. So you're helping and you're really introducing the concept of online learning and social media discussions in a controlled format that, you know, I believe, I'm not exactly sure Dr. McCoy will maybe be able to talk about this a little bit more, but as far as what students can post and, and the privacy, so if a student can just post in general or if they have to request permission to post. Um, so I think that it's really good as far as actually teaching students how to appropriately, appropriately use social media. So the next couple of slides are really just examples of the screenshots. Um, I believe Edmodo, it looks like Facebook, so it has um, it has a little bit of a draw for the younger students because they know, you know, maybe older siblings or older kids are using Facebook. Um, but it also is very user friendly. It's very organized and it's very easy to access the information on the site. So that's really all I have from an elementary perspective. I know a lot of times that um, when you're looking at using social media, like I said, or anything, really any digital learning in the classroom, a lot of times it's geared towards secondary. But I believe that anything you can take with secondary and just modify it and incorporate your parents and really build that involvement within the classroom so the elementary children are using digital learning and becoming comfortable with that as well. Awesome. Let's give a big digital round of applause or thanks for Dr. <laughs> Hurl, but for sharing. Thank you so much. And, and if you have questions, I think we'll do them at the very end. But feel free, if you have them along the way, you know, you can do that as well. But it would be probably easier if we did them at the end. And so we're going to hear from a secondary perspective. We like to hear the entire spectrum. So if you just came into our session, it's being recorded so you'll be able to hear it if you want to go back and watch anything. So here we go. Thanks, Dr. McCoy. I'll let you introduce yourself. Hi, Dr. Simmingson. Um, thank you for the opportunity to be here today. I am a high school teacher. I teach ninth grade at Arlington Collegiate High School and uh, began using Edmodo when I was teaching seventh and eighth grade language arts and AVID in, uh, at a junior high in Arlington. And so uh, have taught it off and on, you know, for a few years. Uh, we have actually uh, switched over at our current high school to uh, uh, a learning management system, Canvas, because it's a little more like Blackboard, which our students are using. Uh, we're a dual credit high school, so they take a lot of college classes at TCC. And so we switched to uh, Canvas because it was more like the Blackboard that they used. But, but uh, up until uh, this year, they did, uh, they did open the school with Edmodo. And it worked very well at the high school level for us. Now, uh, Dr. Simmonson, do I advance the slides or do you? I'm sorry to ask that. You can go ahead and do your There's slides. Yeah. OK. And I'm sorry, but where is the advance button? Oh, it's right on the top right near the recording button. It, it'll say, like, next to your name, left, right. Let me, oh, you know what? Hang on one second. Let me upgrade you real quick. OK. Do you see them now? I do. Thank awesome. you very much. OK. All right. Great. Thank you. All right. So um, uh, as we look through this, one of the, um, uh, to me, when I first began to use Edmodo, I think these two qualifiers really meant a lot to me as a teacher. First of all, it was safe. And it was free uh, because our school district didn't really uh, provide anything more expensive than that for us to use uh, in terms of being able to do some of the things that we wanted to do with Edmodo, um, which had a lot for me to do with creating a paperless classroom and, uh, and to be able to do begin to get the kids involved in some digital citizenship projects. So the fact that it was free meant a lot. And then the fact that it was safe, because I was dealing with, with junior high school students, um, I wanted to be able to be uh, confident that I was protecting their privacy rights as well. And um, kind of looking at a slide here from uh, uh, an Edmodo classroom that, that we used a little bit last year on my campus. Some things to take a look at just so uh, if, if you're going to be looking at the page itself, to be able to say that you can 
you're going to be able to send announcements to your classes once you establish them. Uh, you can establish a, a different class period for each of the, the sections of students that you have. And uh, the, in the upper right hand corner where it says a secure class code, uh, let's, let's start with that because I think security is kind of important. When you create your educator account and uh, begin building your classes, each classroom is assigned a unique uh, classroom code. And that classroom code uh, can be reset at any point along the way. It can be locked. For example, once you have populated your classroom with the students, and we'll talk about how that happens in just a moment, but once that class is fully functioning, you can actually lock that code so that no one else can join that particular class. Now that's kind of helpful at the junior high level where you might have students who, who would give out a code, say, to a, another student and, and then they would join the class and before long you've got all kinds of students inside your classroom there. So that's best case scenario. Worst case is that other people outside of the class entirely would, would have that code. So uh, as a teacher, I felt good that I could actually lock the classroom and no one could join it unless I reopened that code or and, and, and reset it to a new code. And at any given time, I could do that. Uh, let's talk a little bit about how you get your students in there. Uh, as an educator, you're going to establish your own personal account. And once you have created those individual classrooms, and uh, over here on the left-hand side, uh, you can see a list of the classrooms that are created within that, within my account. A student would join that classroom simply by my giving them that code number. And at the Edmodo home screen, they simply identify themselves as a student and they're presented with a, a, an account screen that requires some very basic information. It asks for their first name, their last name. It asks them to establish a username and a password. And it asks for an email, but that's actually an optional um, bit of information that Edmodo does not require, which is great because most junior high school students don't have an email. And then they are uh, asked for the code to your classroom or the section that they're going to be joining. And so giving that information to Edmodo then opens an account for them and they are automatically enrolled in the classroom to which the code that you have given them matches. And that's kind of how that all starts. Let's take a look at this slide. Um, this is a sample uh, of, of, a, of a, actually just a lesson activity that I might have assigned to a student. Um, there are two or three things that we can do here at a, at a very basic level. And if a person is just kind of getting started with Edmodo, don't feel overwhelmed with all of the bells and whistles that it, that it has, uh, you can do some very wonderful basic things there. Um, in creating an, uh, creating an announcement that you can send to everyone in the class, uh, an announcement level is going to be one thing. Then uh, let, let's talk about assignments. Uh, a variety of assignments can be created within the Edmodo homepage. I can actually create quizzes within Edmodo that they take within Edmodo. I can uh, uh, use it to create uh, a formative assessment type of polls if I want to do uh, kind of like Dr. Simmonson did at the beginning of this webinar where she polled her audience. I can poll my audience within Edmodo and get responses about what they've learned. Um, I can provide links that will take them outside of Edmodo. For example, if I created a video and it was uploaded to YouTube that I wanted the students to watch that video as a part of an assignment then I would be able to provide the link to that video on this page and the instructions that they were to, to click on the link and go outside of Edmodo for a bit and watch the video and then come back to Edmodo for the next step of instruction. Uh, I did this recently with, with a group where they watched the video and uh, then came back in for further instructions and the next instruction was then to click on a Google form link which I guess is a whole different webinar when we think about Google applications. But, but I sent them back out then to a Google form where uh, they actually did a formative assessment on that Google form. And so if you're looking at the slide here, this is just the home icon, which is kind of a helpful place to know that's there, where you would just simply be able to relocate, reorient yourself to your home, uh, which is going to, uh, which would look a little bit like this previous slide that we looked at. And this is a quiz, a screen of a quiz that's been assigned to a group of students. Um, 
this quiz was built within Edmodo, and it's it's not um, uh, not the most robust kind of quiz generator, but it does a pretty good job with basic uh, objective type questions, uh, which is often very helpful in just a formative way to assess uh, what students are, are learning so far. Uh, but I created a quiz here, and uh, there was an opportunity to send it out to the classes, and the students, it appears on their page as an assignment for them to complete. And they would, uh, of course, click on the link to the quiz go and answer the questions. And then one of the nice things uh, for a lot of teachers is that, that Edmodo does, pro that those quizzes are self-graded and uh, so that you can go into the gradebook and check the progress, which is this little icon up here that looks a little bit like a, uh, I guess, kind of a, an EKG rhythm pattern, but uh, that's going to be the, uh, the progress mark that would take you into the individual gradebook records of student assignments. One of the newer features with Edmodo that's kind of exciting, and, and uh, in Google, uh, excuse me, Edmodo is free, of course, but they have recently created something called Spotlight, which is a uh, has the potential to cost a little bit of money, not much, but but basically, if 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 you were at your homepage in Edmodo and you found the Spotlight icon up at the top, you would click on that and be taken here to a bank of applications or apps that function well within Edmodo that teachers have designed or uh, different types of uh, uh, alternative assignment objects that you can use. Uh, for example, I think our next slide takes me to one that I, yes, uh, this one right here. Uh, I work with our robotics club, and so I was kind of interested in the fact that someone has actually put robotics tutorials within Edmodo, and this one happens to be free. It is a link to an outside a website that looks like this, which is going to take me to the uh, material that's provided for using the Lego Mindstorm robots, which we use in our ninth grade robotics club. And so I was kind of interested that Spotlight uh, had this feature, that Edmodo had the Spotlight feature, and that uh, we were ab able to actually uh, get access to some pretty creative assignment tools in that sense. And that's just to kind of show you what that what that link actually took me to out on the web, the kind of uh, tutorial that that was. Now, uh, some things about videos with Edmodo. Edmodo does not have its own video viewer, uh, so if if you did use any kind of video assignment, uh, the students are going to actually be leaving Edmodo to watch that video. Uh, embedding the code to your videos, however, is fairly easy, just establishing the link that allows the student to, to go to that. But you'll want to check a video viewer based on your own school technology abilities. Uh, in junior high school, uh, many times YouTube is still blocked, and students have difficulty getting to that. I know certainly in elementary that's an issue. Uh, at the high school level, uh, that's much less of a problem. And uh, it's easy to, to load a YouTube video into an assignment for me now that I'm in high school. But a couple of other options that I have looked at from time to time are teachertube.com and schooltube.com. Uh, those are viable alternatives for a lot of people in elementary situations and junior high. Personally, I use uh, an application called nomia.com for a lot of my lessons. I can actually create lessons within that that are recorded lessons, and they are posted on the Nomia website. And in junior high school, uh, my students had no trouble getting to know Mia to be able to watch those uh, videos that I created and posted there. So that was a very, very helpful workaround for me um, when when I was in junior high school. Now, uh, know Mia has an iPad application that lets you do some pretty creative things for lesson uh, creation. The web-based nomia.com is actually more of a storage site for the lessons that you create in their other application. Uh, another application that um, I think is kind of helpful is edpuzzle.com that allows you to embed comments, edit videos, and provide formative assessments that are actually linked to the video itself. Uh, with edpuzzle.com, you take an existing video and then you use their 
control system to shorten. If you only wanted to watch a five minute portion of a 10 minute video, you could actually edit that down and create your own shortened version. You can embed comments within it that allow the students to pause and be able to reflect on, on statements that are made in the video. And then even simple formative assessments embedded in the video as well. And once you've created that at Edpuzzle, then you can embed the code to that video which you've now created in Edmodo. So they're not just going out to watch a video, they're actually going out to use a formative assessment tool which you've created yourself. Uh, Edmodo helps solve a lot of workflow problems. Uh, it's very simple for students to download documents to applications like Microsoft Word. Uh, they can generate applications in Word, uh, excuse me, generate assignments in Word and upload those, those directly to Edmodo. So it may be that you start with an assignment that says, you know, go to your Microsoft Word and open a new document and create a document that does this. Uh, at the end of that assignment, they save it, and then they upload it directly to Edmodo. So they save their copy. After downloading it, they make changes, adding their own material, and then they upload that change document to Edmodo for you as a teacher to review or grade. And it becomes a, a constant revision process where you can uh, send the document back and forth with uh, repeated revisions and corrections until the document is in final draft form. All right, great. Um, Dr. McCoy, we had a few questions. And um, I'll, I'll, I'll start with a general question for both of you. What are advantages of using Edmodo over using something like, you mentioned Canvas or another learning management system? Like, why Edmodo? What, what made you use it? Was it required from your district? Is it something you chose? Maybe each of you could, could answer that question. Dr. Hurlbut, I'll let you go first. Yeah. Was it something district initiative or your own? Hi. So, hi. Um, and let me make sure because I know there was a concern about my volume. Is that, a, is that better? Oh, yeah. Much okay. better. I'm using a Mac, so it, it's a little bit different. I don't have the headset. Um, so with my district, I was working in McKinney ISD as an administrator at the time, and our and a huge huge technology initiative was going on at the time, and Edmodo was something that because it was free, something that the district didn't have to purchase, that's why it was a big push. Um, but also because kind of some of the things that have been mentioned, it was, you know, available and could be used in elementary. It was safe and free, pretty much everything that's been mentioned. Um, as far as I know there was, a, I was reading in the, the chat window about Blackboard. You know, Blackboard was something that I, I believe you have to purchase, and I have never seen used in a district setting. I've only seen in higher education. So that was why Edmodo was a draw for us. And be, really, it was because it was just so easy to learn. Um, so I don't know, Dr. McCoy, do you want to? Yeah, when, yeah. when Edmodo, I think. When I was first introduced to it several years ago, there weren't many competitors for Edmodo that were free and safe um, that I had access to in the district. And uh, so Edmodo seemed like a very natural uh, choice because it met those two requirements. We weren't provided with anything more expensive. Um, but it did allow me, to, as, as an online learning environment, it did allow me to introduce a more individualized approach to, to assignments because I could run multiple assignments with different groups of students. Um, I could uh, uh, solve the paper problem, which was a real concern for me. As a, an, an ELA teacher, I was just drowning in, in essays and papers to grade. And um, uh, with Edmodo, I had the opportunity to carry uh, much less uh, paper home at the end of the day to grade. And, uh, and that was kind of, you know, moving more toward a, a paperless classroom was, was a concern for me. Okay, awesome. Can you grade on a mobile device like an iPad? Yes. Oh, that's convenient. That's yeah. great. And especially now, especially now that you, you, you're linked to Google, uh, it becomes very functional at that point. Okay, good. Um, let me ask this. Is there widespread use of Edmodo, like, do other people use it? Is it required? Is it something our new teachers should be expected to know how to use? 
I want to say that, that I think that the idea of online learning that Edmodo does is certainly the, the principles of that are certainly what you want your pre-service teachers to be learning how to use. I don't know. I think certainly in elementary and junior high, that's probably going to be the best option that they're going to have to, to be able to use. So I, I guess yes. At the high school level, uh, we did switch this year. It was required that all of our teachers use Edmodo last year. But, uh, but as I said, we are kind of gradually converting over to Canvas at the high school, at our particular high school. Okay, great. Um, I haven't written for it to be required. Oh, go ahead. I would just like to say it's what I've seen is that it's required. You're required to use technology in the classroom. Um, and I even mentioned in one of the chats that I know in elementary it's different in secondary because they typically it's broken up by subject. But in elementary, since you're a master of teaching all the subjects, typically you're responsible for teaching the technology peaks that are in the classroom. So you, so Edmodo was a great way to really incorporate all of those peaks. Sorry, my audio is off. Is there an issue with access to computers that might um, limit use of tools like this? Have you ever had any issues with not having available computers in your classroom or access? I did in junior high school. Um, it was a big concern because 75% or so of my students at that time did not have a personal device that they could use at home or did not have internet that they could use at home. Uh, but we saw that change over the last few years. And now that the mobile applications are much more uh, accessible, uh, the students who don't typically have uh, a standard kind of internet service at home often have a data plan with a cell phone. And it becomes more possible as a, a, with, with the mobile applications. Um, um, Dr. Hurlbut, did you have anything you wanted to add? Um, also, a question was about can parents directly leave, I think, leave messages? Can they have private access to Edmodo for their own child, or is it group kind of access? You know, I think it actually depends upon how the teacher sets it, because I think that you can have certain settings. Dr. McCoy might know that. I've actually never taught with Edmodo. I've only known when we had campus trainings where our teachers were using Edmodo, so I've never mm -hmm. actually used it with my class. In mm -hmm. an elementary setting, I've used it in higher education, and it's a little bit different. But I believe it's according to the setting. But what I've seen with parents is that if the teachers wanted the parents to have that access code, they would just send it out directly to the parent's email address. Yeah, it generates an access code um, for the parent that enables the parent to see their own students' work. Uh, they can't really engage the students in conversation. In, as far as the, the chat or dialogue feature, but it does enable them to access uh, work that, that, that is geared toward their student. Okay, great, awesome. You guys um, both mentioned some other tools. Um, this slide in particular was great where you insert videos um, and things. I just wanted to share a tool that I learned about recently at a conference, and it's where you can make your own um, lesson around a TED Talk video or actually any video. And I thought, I want to try that and then insert it into maybe um, the Edmodo space I use with my students. And then can you tell us just a bit more about Edpuzzle? I keep, I've heard about it. Is it something that's easy to use to make things with a video? Yeah, it's, uh, it's not difficult to, to, to find your way around once you get to the website. Um, you're going to begin with an established video that either you have created or you have downloaded from YouTube or, or some, other, some other site. And you use the tools that are embedded in Edpuzzle to, uh, for, as I said, to shorten. Maybe you only want to use a three-minute portion of a 20-minute video. You can actually create uh, your own video that is that two- or three-minute portion. And then you can use their tools to uh, insert uh, comments and dialogue boxes within the video. It's it's a, a pretty interesting little tool. Okay, great. We'll check it out. And then, what is Nomia? Nomia um, is a as I said, it comes in two versions. If you're looking at at it on 
on an iPad, for example, an iPad actually has the uh, creation tools that, that lets you uh, piece together your own video and your own lesson plan, and then you upload that to nomia.com. Nomia.com, you, you would typically access that maybe on a PC, and you would not create lessons there. It just stores the lessons that you created on the iPad. Um, and it's, as I said, it's so far in Arlington, it, our filters were not that sensitive to it, and, and my students had a little trouble accessing lessons that I put on Nomia. Okay, awesome. We had um, another question. Do you ever have students that would rather use pencil and paper or pen and paper for either of you? Yeah, uh, I do. And, and, and still do. Um, and there are certain assignments where I don't have a problem with that, but as I think Dr. Hurlbut mentioned earlier, as teachers we do have responsibility to teach those technology techniques, and, uh, and, and in particular now the ISTE standards are, are kind of coming into play some. And so at some point even those students who prefer the pen and paper are going to need to be able to learn the digital environment in order to, to for us to be able to say that they're mastering uh, those particular things. I like that. It's kind of more of an expectation. I have teachers, by the way, that I work with who, uh, who much prefer <laughs> I know paper what you and mean. pencil, too. Dr. Hurlbut, do you want to add anything to yeah. that? Well, in elementary, usually if they're getting to use something new like this, they're so excited about getting to use the computer or whatever is new that it's not typically an issue. <laughs> but I'm sure it could be, but I just haven't seen it in elementary. Right, it's more of a novelty. Yeah, the yeah. design of Edmodo, uh, the fact that they fashioned it so closely to Facebook, uh, at least when kids were into Facebook, uh, was an attractive thing for them. And, and younger kids who haven't gotten tired of Facebook yet probably still get pretty excited about that opportunity. Yeah, exactly. Okay, great. Um, I'm going to give people a chance to type what is something you want to explore or try? And just type that in the chat window. Like, I actually, I know it wasn't the focus of this session, but I want to look more into Quizlet and Nomia and other things that I can use in conjunction with Edmodo. So I want to definitely look into those things. I'm currently using it as a question and answer board for students in my undergraduate class, and I emphasize to them that they can access it on their phones and that's how handy it is. So what is something everyone wants to try? Just type your response in the chat window and then we'll read through. I hope to explore or just something you learned or want to try or want to know more about. Remember, I think Edmodo has a blog where they have like lesson plans. I'm going to put that in the chat window. Just blog.edmodo.com. So let's see what let's see what people are sharing. We give people a minute, and then we'll we'll do like any final thoughts. Okay, try Edpuzzle. Okay, great, Edmodo. Also, did everyone get these slides? They're on SlideShare. If you just joined us, let me put the link in the chat window, and I encourage you to click on it so you can go back and look through the slides. Um, let's see, student application based on exploration they did in class to share knowledge. I really like the parent involvement feature. It's completely different than when I taught. I think things are much more transparent now. OK, great. Excellent. I'm going to go ahead and post some resources in the chat window. And they are where to find our previous recordings, like this one, in case you have a, a colleague who there's a lot of links in the chat window. Um, but just, you know, if you want to click on them, I'll leave the session open for a few minutes at the end. And you can go through and look. We have archived recorded webinars, and we'll put this one up by tomorrow. We have our slide share. You can learn through those. And we have podcasts, Pinterest, Facebook, and more. So great job, you guys.
Our last slide is just a quick mention about we have a graduate program. We have many graduate programs. Um, we have Mind Brain and Education. If you're interested in learning more about neuroscience, I just wanted to highlight this program, and I'll leave that slide up too while we wrap up. But did you want to say any final thoughts, Dr. Hurlbut or Dr. McCoy? I just no, want to I'm say good. thank you. Thank you. Thank you for thank you for the opportunity for me to be here today. Yeah, thanks for presenting. Dr. Hurlbut, any final thoughts? I just wanted to say thank you for having me. This was really fun to participate. I teach a couple of online classes, and I really would like to incorporate more of this. So this is a learning opportunity for me. Oh, good. Excellent. And I'm glad the technology worked. <laughs> um, go ahead and post your you know, thank you in the chat window, and we'll kind of wrap up our Saturday webinar. So thanks so much to you guys for presenting. A round of applause for you guys. And we really appreciated and benefited from this. And we'll be sharing the recording as well and the slides. So people that couldn't attend will be able to tune into that. And we'll send it to our current students as well. So thank you.